Thank you once again for joining me on Crunch Econometrics. We are still on our Heteroscedasticity series. If you are just joining this tutorial, we have covered quite a lot on how to understand the nature, the causes, and the consequences of heteroscedasticity. We have also covered how heteroscedasticity can be detected using both informal and formal approaches. In resolving heteroscedasticity, we have talked about how functional forms of a model can actually eradicate that problem of heteroscedasticity. Now in this tutorial, I will show you how you can use the generalized or the weighted least squares in correcting for heteroscedasticity. On the screen is the stylized equation with respect to the generalized least squares. If you recall equation 1 that we have been using all along, equation 1 is heteroscedastic given by the error structure of the variance. With the sigma having a subscript i, it shows that the variance in this model is not constant. Now, to use the generalized least squares, you have to divide equation 1 by the standard deviation of the error term. And remember that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So dividing equation 1 by the standard deviation as shown in equation 2 transforms the model to equation 3. And that also transforms the variance to be equal to 1. So by the time you deploy the GLS approach, OLS estimators are now efficient and the estimates from equation 3 are now blue. For the weighted least squares, it is the same procedure as the GLS, where in this case, weights are used to adjust the variable. The weight in this case is 1 over sigma i, which is the same thing that was done on that GLS. So by the time equation 1 is multiplied by the weight, we have equation 4 as shown on the screen which is the same thing as equation 3 for the GLS model. So the GLS and the WLS can be used synonymously. You are going to get the same results. Once again, for the weighted least squares, you are going to have a weighted structure by 1 over sigma. And by the generalized least squares, you are going to divide each term in your model by sigma which is the same thing as multiplying everything in equation 1 by 1 over sigma. So the GLS approach and the WLS approach will give the same outcome. But we need to consider some points for the GLS and the WLS. There will be a difficulty to estimate equations 3 and 4 because the structure of the variance, the heteroscedastic variance, is unknown. So it is important to have a prior knowledge about the structure of this heteroscedastic variance before both approaches or either approach can work. In this instance, we are going to reconstruct the variance and multiply it by a known variable. This known variable is expected to have values across all observations, talking about an independent variable. So having the known variable, you divide the entire equation 1 by that known variable as shown in equation 5. So this transforms the model to what you can see in equation 3 prime. So equation 3 prime is the same thing as equation 3 under the GLS and WLS approaches. But now we know the structure of the variance being depicted by a known independent variable. So once we can reconstruct that, we now have a homoscedastic variance as shown right here. So the GLS and the WLS approaches correct for heteroscedasticity. But care must be taken during interpretation. This is because the slope coefficient of the variable that is used as the weight will now become the intercept of the model. And the prior intercept of that model now becomes a slope coefficient. For more on how you are going to interpret your GLS results, I will refer you to the references I have listed 
at the end of the screen. That is outside the scope of this tutorial. So if you are ready, please load your data and let's get started. If you are interested in my data and do file, kindly follow the instruction as shown on the screen. So consistent with our variables, price, rooms, and square feet, and we have identified that both of these variables drive better risk elasticity in the model. So we are going to use each of them to run analysis for the GLS or WLS. So for this example, I'm only going to use square feet as a weight. Then you can practice on your own using rooms. So this tutorial, I will only be using square feet as a weight. I have all the commands written here in my do file. So I'll simply highlight all and execute. So as shown on the screen, we have the output from the generalized or the weighted least squares. In the first regression, I use the level level of the variables. And we can see that typical of level level models, even despite using the weights, the model is still heteroscedastic. So this confirms what I said initially, that level level models are always or more often than not heteroscedastic. Let's look at the second analysis. Now I have a log level model with a log of price and the levels of the independent variables. Our interest is on the outcome of the Bruce Pagan test and we can see here the p-value is 0 0.6509 clearly telling us that the problem of heteroscedasticity has been removed using the weighted least squares approach and the log level uh, functional form of the model. Let's take a look at the third one, what I call my log level log model, where I have the log of price and the log of square feet, but the level of rooms. Our interest again is on the outcome of the test. The p-value is 0 0.6539. So again, the problem of heteroscedasticity has been corrected using the weighted least squares or the GLS approach. And also by transforming the variables using a functional form. So lastly, let's consider a log-log model with the attached weight. The p-value of the test statistic is 0 0.5843, clearly telling us that we cannot reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. So the model now is homoscedastic. So again, you can easily correct for heteroscedasticity by using either the functional form of the model or the GLS or weighted least squares approaches. So these are the learning outcomes. The assigned weight is one over square feet. And this is what we observed. When we use the level level form of the model with the attached weight, the model is still heteroscedastic. But when we change the functional forms using the log level, we have homoscedastic models. So with the log level and weight is homoscedastic with a log level log model with the weight is homoscedastic and with the log log formation and the weight the model is homoscedastic so this one tells you that level level models are prone to being heteroscedastic for more information about the GLS or WLS approaches please pick any of these textbooks read for you to know how you can interpret your results these are my uh, three go-to, easy to understand test book. So if you are a beginner and you are struggling with econometrics, I will encourage you to either get Woodridge, Asterian Hall, or Gujarati. I know there are so many test books out there, so many good ones. But to the best of my knowledge, these are really, really easy test books that any beginner can relate with. So get any of them and read about the GLS and WLS approaches. So far we've covered all this. Please stay with me. My next video will be how we can use the white robust standard errors to solve the problem of heteroscedasticity. Thank you so much for the support and the questions I've received so far in this tutorial. If you are yet to subscribe to my channel, kindly do so and share my link with your friends, your colleagues and the academic community. 
Please don't go away. I'll be right back.